could be expected. Let's at least not forget to think logically and use the correct categories. If we want to say that uh, there's a lot of corruption and um, cynicism, affectless nihilism in our culture, you get no argument from me. I argue it all the time, actually. I think the existence of this uh, relativist left is one of the products and proofs of it. But uh, it's in no wise and in no way the case that the cure for that is apocalyptic terrorism. Mm-hmm. It is not even not the cure. It would be insulting to say that. It's, it's, it's worse than any possible disease. The failures of, of multicultural post-religious democracy are not to be cured by fascism. And, and the last time it was tried by fascism, that was exactly the same answer. Mm-hmm. Our society has become degenerate. It has no values. It has no... Yeah. Thus, a militarized death cult seems to be indicated. That seems like a non sequitur to me, mm-hmm. I have to say. Well, I just have to wonder what the place of. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm talking to someone, you're talking to someone who would essentially be indifferent to a question like gay marriage. I, mean, I don't care. As long as homosexuals are unmolested, I don't mind whether they get married or not. If you ask me, should, it, should they be able to get married? I, I can think of only two reasons. One is they wouldn't marry heterosexuals anymore, which used to happen, creating a lot of misery, mm-hmm. widening the circle of unhappiness among a lot of people. It's very good that that's no yeah. okay. And second, it would really piss off the fundamentally. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the only, that's, then you've exhausted my case. for My, my first point, by the way, is very seldom made, as far as I know, is original to me. It would mean fewer gay marriages between mm-hmm. closet cases and Naive. Well, as you so, said, which historically has caused a lot of misery. Awful amount of pain. Mm-hmm. Um, and second, but not original to me, but it really would upset the, uh, the faithful. And it has. Yeah. So, Christopher. They, good grief. These guys can send women pilots to bomb the Taliban, mm. you know, and to overthrow Saddam Hussein. And they can do all this, and they're, but they're having an election where all they're arguing about is whether faggots can get wed. We think we don't understand their world. They have not a clue about ours. <laughs> None. <laughs> we think we've got no right to judge their culture. Maybe we don't. But they certainly don't have any right to judge ours. It's certainly not by force. And if relativism doesn't work in one direction, or cultural privilege doesn't work, it doesn't work in the other either. Flat out, straight out basis of, of equality, I insist on that. Absolutely. I'm not going to be lectured by them. Okay, if they don't, I will try not to lecture them in return. That seems like but a good I absolutely argument. insist on the precondition. Mm-hmm. So, Christopher, you said earlier um, that there have to be certain things worth dying or indeed killing for. So, what for you at this exact moment in time would constitute that? Well, it would be all the things that are roughly speaking associated with the Enlightenment. In other words, free inquiry, unfettered inquiry, scientific inquiry, the freedom to have an unmolested sex life. That's a fantastically important thing. It's very new in human history mm-hmm. and very all, uh, at all times and places very much challenged. And we take it so much for granted that we don't realize how unusual it is and how important. In other words, the, if you like the abolition, not the abolition, but the realization of the evils of sexual repression, um, internationalism, yeah. uh, all of that. And I suppose if you could sum it up in one word, I mean, yeah, in a way that the, the whole of the enemy face can be summed in the word censorship. And so the, uh, the fact that all arguments for it and against it, which are usually the benchmarks ever since the trial of Socrates of the emancipation of the species, essentially was usually justified because um, without it there would be blasphemy. So in other words, the, the right to blaspheme and the abolition essentially are almost the same thing. It's just it's the shortest way of phrasing the difference yeah. between <coughs> the Enlightenment view and the theocratic view is that. And it shows now that it's a radically oppositional magisterium or magisteria. They yeah. aren't compatible. I don't want them to be. I want there to be a fight. And I want the chance to take part in it. Is it a fight that can be won? Yes, but it's, well, it's certainly a fight that can't be lost. Let's put it like that. Yeah. It cannot be lost. And it's anyway, it's a pleasure to take part in it. Uh, it's worth doing for its own sake, win or lose. In a way, one of the reasons why I think it can be won is that the fools on the other side don't realize that what they demand is impossible. 
and they force therefore people to take part in the argument who might have wanted to acquire a knife. It doesn't apply to me, but it does apply to a lot of people mm-hmm. woken up now to what's, what the threat is. Mm-hmm. I think that's um, it's a good point to join to a close. We're, we're virtually out of time. So, Christopher, thank well, you very well, much yeah, again well, for. Well, it's an honour. Thank you.